So far in this class, we have talked a lot about um, solving triangles, uh, but mostly solving right triangles. Uh, as we move forward, we're going to start being able to solve all kinds of triangles, not just right triangles. Um, we're going to start off with um, oblique triangles, but just anything that's not a right triangle, I guess. Um, and so I'll just draw a quick one up here. Just some sort of triangle. I'll make this maybe it's an acute triangle. It means all three angles are acute. Uh, a couple things to consider. Remember when we were solving triangles in the past with right triangles, we know that um, the sum of the angles, we'll call these um, angles A, B, and C, and then the opposite sides we'll call little a, little b, and little c. Now again, there's no right, tri there's no right angle here. Uh, but the only thing we really know right now is that the sum of the measures of the three sides, measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C must equal 180 degrees. Okay, so that's for any triangle. It doesn't have to be a right triangle. That's for all of them. <clears throat> okay, now let's just consider this as an acute triangle, but it works for obtuse triangles as well. Um, and let's take and create a right triangle uh, by dropping a, a line segment from one vertex perpendicular to the other side. Okay. Then what we'll see is that in the, the right triangle on the left, if you look at angle A here, um, let's do this. Let's take that vertical, that uh, perpendicular side, let's call it H for the height of the triangle. Okay. Then this angle A, the sine of A, is going to be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, on this right triangle on the left, the opposite side is H, and the hypotenuse is C. Right? So sine of A is H over C. Think about angle C on the other side. Sine of C, whoa, I wrote that kind of funny. Let's do that again. Sine of C is equal to opposite over hypotenuse for the triangle on the right. So again, opposite is H, hypotenuse is A, so it's H over A, all right? <clears throat> so now, um, it's funny, I did that on an angle and that one not on an angle. Let's make that consistent, uh, H over A. All right, good enough. Now, in each of these um, equations, there's a common H, right? H shows up on both of them. It's the only thing that shows up in both of them. Um, so we're going to solve them for H. To do that, I'm going to multiply both sides of this first equation by C to eliminate the C. And this one, I'm going to multiply both sides by A to eliminate the A. <coughs> All right, so the C's cancel off here, the A's cancel off there. We have C times the sine of A equals H. And over here, I have A times the sine of big C is equal to H. Well, if two things are equal to the same H, then they must be equal to each other, right? If two things are equal to H, then they must be themselves equal to each other. So, I can do a substitution here. This stuff is equal to H, so it's, it can be substituted for H. And I get C times the sine of A is equal to A times the sine of C. That's little c sine of big A, little a sine of big C. Okay. Again, the big letters, the capital letters are the angles, the small letters are the side lengths. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my A's and C's on the same side, so it's a little bit less confusing. To do that, I'm going to divide both sides by the product of AC. Divide both sides by the A and the C, the two coefficients. What that will do on the left is it will cancel the C's, and on the right it will cancel the A's. All right. And what I'm going to be left with is the sine of A 
over little a is equal to the sine of c over little c. Okay. Of course, these two fractions being equal to each other means the reciprocals are equal. It doesn't matter um, whether the signs are on top or on the bottom. And so the more common form of this, little a over the sine of big A equals little c over the sine of big C. Okay. Essentially what we have is a side the ratio of a side divided by the sine of the other angle, opposite angle, will equal the ratio of a side divided by the sine of the opposite angle uh, for any angle, okay, for any side angle combination. In fact, I could have drawn my perpendicular from any of the three vertices, not just from B, and I would have been able to create a similar e equation with angle B and side B, okay? And so rather than showing all the details of that, because it's essentially the same thing, um, you can relate this to little b over the sine of big B. Okay? <clears throat> and so I don't need to have a 90 degree angle to be able to utilize the sine in solving a triangle. I just need to know this, which is called the law of sines. Okay? It's a uh, proportion, essentially. Um, because it's relating fractions together um, and it involves the sine of the angles. It's always the sine of an angle and the opposite side in the fraction. Um, and so this relationship along with our uh, sum formula for the, the angles of a triangle will help us now in solving for any triangle. Um, there are some exceptions um, there are some triangles that either I can't use this or when I use it I might you know, get multiple different possible triangles, um, certain scenarios where that happens. But generally speaking, if I give you three pieces of information about a triangle, that'd be maybe two angles and a side or two sides and an angle or, or three sides. Um, it won't work with three angles though because a triangle can be different with, you can have two different triangles with the same three angles, different sizes. So three angles won't work, but any other three pieces of information, you then should be able to find the other three pieces of information. So if I give you two sides and an angle, you should be able to find the other side and the other two angles, okay? Um, using this formula and this formula. Um, again, there are some exceptions, which we'll see in the next couple sections, where we're gonna utilize a new formula called the law of cosines, but that's coming up later. Um, for right now, we'll go with uh, these two formulas and then we'll be able to solve a large variety of right triangles using just those two formulas. I'm sorry, not right triangles, um, <laughs> oblique triangles, uh, non-right triangles using those formulas.